So Valentine's Day is coming up this weekend and Trisha Hershberger reminded us all that it's okay to love yourself. At which point I automatically think you should be reminding us to wash our hands afterwards, but well that's me. So if you can't tell, I'm fat naked, this is a naked truth, and Trisha Hershberger in Infinite Wisdom has decided to talk about the interesting topic of how to survive Valentine's Day. Not necessarily if you're single, but how to survive. Is this a thing? I mean, really? Surviving Valentine's Day? Because, I mean, if you really, really don't like Valentine's Day, or you are upset for being single, what you do is just binge watch your favorite show the next day, or the day before. You binge watch your favorite show, drink three Red Bulls, and then just by midnight you fall asleep and wake up, it's tomorrow. That's how you survive Valentine's Day, by just not living that day. Simple. No, but honestly, this Valentine's Day, I did, I did mention to my brother that we should not go out, two men should not go out, uh, two brothers, specifically, should not go out on Valentine's Day. Two homosexuals should go out on Valentine's Day if they feel like it, but I'm gonna be honest with you here. You know, this is what I, if I had a girlfriend, which I don't, but if I had, I've never even had a girlfriend on Valentine's Day, you know that? Just never came up. But if I did have a girlfriend on Valentine's Day, what would I really want for Valentine's Day? I'd want her to do the dishes. That's kind of... I do all the cooking anyway. It, cooking, is, cooking is by nature a male thing. It's, it's always been that way with my family. My mother couldn't cook. My grandmother refused to cook. My father couldn't really cook either, but my sister, she tried. She tried and she failed. And, well, come to think of it, my brother can't cook either. He used to try to cook. What it was is that my mother passed away when I was ten. And my father didn't feel the need to look after his children. So the 14-year-old, which was my older brother, was the one to cook. Because my 12-year-old sister was not old enough, apparently. So it was 14 was the age where you started cooking in my house. The proxy. And uh, the man, he could burn things really well, but not cook them. And he generally didn't know vegetables at the time either. So there was that. So there's the thing. I've always cooked. And I do enjoy restaurants. I enjoy restaurants because when I go to restaurants, I don't have to do the dishes. If it weren't for all the work involved, I would cook every meal I eat because I actually prefer my cooking to the cooking of restaurants. Granted, it tends to be a lot healthier when I cook it, and it's not a mass of french fries, but rather a steamed cauliflower, but that's beside the point. I could make french fries if I really wanted to, I don't. I like french fries, but I mean, it doesn't compare to me having a decent meal of my own. See, th this is the thing. For a man, Valentine's Day, if you're single, is wonderful. Valentine's Day, if you're single, is wonderful because no woman wants to be single on Valentine's Day. So you go to Panera Bread and suddenly that sort of cute girl that you've you've never spoken to before, but she works there, and you know, I guess you've taken her, she's taken your order, there's that, and then suddenly she sees you the week before Valentine's Day, and she takes this pose like, I have breasts, did you notice? And you go, why yes, you do have breasts. Why are you doing that? And then after you walk out of the Panera Bread, you think, gee, she was giving me the sign, wasn't she? I probably should have asked her out. Damn. But that's Valentine's Day for the single man, is that women suddenly realize they're single more and their, their standards just drop a little. And they work just a little harder to get your attention. Valentine's Day, I love the week before Valentine's Day. You walk out there, every single woman is advertising the fact that she's on the market. This is the other thing. If you're a man and you're not single, you're probably not going to like Valentine's Day that much because this is a day you're expected to prove the love that's already obviously there. I mean, a woman, what does she want for Valentine's Day? She wants jewelry, she wants chocolate, she wants flowers. Man, it's like, look, I want socks, condoms, and a dental guard. 
Man, you, if you were a man and you woke, and your significant other brought you socks, condoms, and a dental card, you'd have to put up that package and be like, Honey, you know me so well! I'm trying to be funny. I know I'm bad at it. The sexual jokes have never been my thing. But, yeah. Let me give you my idea of, though, for the sake of those people that don't watch Trisha Hershberger's show, she did mention don't go to restaurants on Valentine's Day, stay in, avoid the crowds, go out the day after or two weeks after, pick your day for Valentine's Day. I'm going to take that a step further. This is what you do. Don't celebrate every holiday. Work that out with your significant other. You're not going to ce celebrate every holiday. Maybe one year it's the anniversary and the next year it's Valentine's Day. And I'll tell you why. Because you want these days to be special. And it's hard for you to make a day special every year, especially when you got 12 of the dang things. Some women have, okay, there's the day we met, the day you proposed, the anniversary of our wedding, Valentine's Day, my birthday, and, well, let's just throw Martin Luther King Day in there. Those are all days where you should remember our relationship and, and make me feel romantic. No. I tell you this much. I had this one professor in college. His name was Dr. Bide. And he was a hideous man. And he made us very aware of the fact that he was a hideous man. He looked like zombie Santa Claus. But you loved the guy because he was such a wonderful person to be around. But he was an analyst. A psychoanalyst. So as a psychoanalyst, he had a lot of money. And he had it worked out with his wife that they celebrated their anniversary every two years. Because, being the kind of person with a lot of money, he wanted to have really good anniversaries. So the more rare they are, the better you have them. And he said, actually, this year, I did five years worth of anniversary. Because what I did is I went out there... And I went to a show, an art show, and I bought a $30,000 painting for my wife. And he takes her to the art show, and he says, you know, hey, look at this painting, and he touches it. And the wife goes, oh, honey, honey, you, you can't touch the paintings, you can't touch the paintings. Oh, I'm sure it's okay, let's see who this belongs to, there's a tag right here. And there's her name. So, he could touch it because it was her painting. Yeah, and he goes, yeah, well, that was five years' worth of anniversary. He's not doing that again for a while. And, you know, you love the guy for it. It was just a wonderful idea there. Let's, let's have the days be special because we do them when, when we want them to be really good as opposed to doing them all the time. And I'm going to tell you the other thing about surviving Valentine's Day. I have a friend in New York. If you ever need puppets, Google the Miller Puppet Co. because her husband makes puppets. And she put out on her Facebook that she was at work and a package arrived for her and it was vegan chips and vegan chocolate because she's recently had a child. She's not really feeling as young as she used to feel and it's really hard taking care of that child. So her husband just decided, I'm going to do something nice for my wife today. Not because it was Valentine's Day or it was an anniversary or it was a birthday. It was just a day he felt like doing it. That is what shows how you care about people, is you're in tune with them. You are in tune with their feelings. You look at this person and you think, you're having a hard day, I should do something about it. I mean, I will tell you this much. When I was a younger man, and my sister still lived with me, she would always fight with her boyfriend. So what I had to do was I went out there and I bought three loaf pans. And every time I wanted to sleep, I had to make cornbread. Because I would cook the cornbread, I would set it out, and they would be too busy eating to fight. And that means I would be able to get to sleep. So that was the thing for my sister, was cornbread. It was cornbread with butter and honey. I remember this perfectly. Now if her husband could make cornbread with butter and honey, I generally imagine he'd have to make it all the time so that she would stop yelling at him. But I stay out of their business. Yeah, there's the thing. Holidays are for chumps. It's a first world problem. 
If you care about someone, it's not about spending money, it's not about putting all this stuff together, it's about caring about them. Caring about them. You should be the person that doesn't say, oh, I'm going to do this on Valentine's Day. No, you're going to be the person that's every day you're caring about this other person in your life. That is what a relationship is about. It's not all about them today and all about you tomorrow. It's about both of you in a synergist, in a yin and yang, in a balance of things going on. That is a relationship. Forget the holidays. Holidays are for abusive people. I mean, I tell you, this is the thing about if an abusive husband. An abusive husband never forgets Valentine's Day because he's making up for all the stupid shit he did for the rest of the year. That's called the honeymoon phase of the abusive cycle. Then once he's been forgiven, he goes out there and cheats on his wife again because that's what abusive husbands do. Or he smacks her around again or he does something else unpleasant. You shouldn't be using a special day to make up for the fact that you didn't love your significant other for the rest of the year. Just remember you're in love every day. Every day you should remember how much you love each other. And it's not necessarily about extravagance or doing this or doing that. It's about being aware of that person and their feelings. And I think this is probably the mushiest, also and most perverted, uh, naked truth I've ever done, but what do you expect? I'm a fat, naked, sweaty guy about to put on a stupid uniform and then go freeze his business off out somewhere in Lakewood. Oh, it's going to be cold. Not too cold, actually. It's only going to be 65 today, but I digress.